The title is Buried Cravings. Would you turn with me in your Bible to Numbers chapter 11? Numbers chapter 11. Now let me say while you're turning something about the name of this book. It doesn't sound too exciting. Numbers. Sounds like a math book. <clears throat> Sounds like a telephone book. Actually, what the word means, numbers, is census. Most of you got a letter last week saying you were going to get your census in the mail and you need to fill it out or somebody's going to knock on your door. The 2010 census is here. This book opens with a census. They were at Mount Sinai and the Lord said, Tell me how many men do you have 20 years of age and older from each of the 12 tribes who can go to war? And they counted them up, and they had 603,550. And then later on, near the end of this book, in chapter 26, I believe it is, after 40 years of wandering around, God said, you're getting ready to go into the promised land, take another census. And lo and behold, they had less men of fighting age than they had 40 years earlier. 601,730. What happened? They didn't grow because God had to come down every now and then and punish them. At one point, 24,000 at a time died of a plague. So you could call this book a book of census. Um, I prefer to call it by an older title, the book of wonderings. 
Because between the first census and the second census, you have 40 years of going around and around and around because of their lack of faith and disobedience. But this time through, I've noticed something else. They wondered and wondered and wondered because they kept whining and whining and whining. They didn't like the food. They didn't like the leadership. They didn't like the water. They had too much of this and not enough of that. So I believe now I would call it the book of wonderings and whinings. Numbers chapter 11 gives us a record of their very first stop in this journey from Mount Sinai, which was supposed to be a pretty quick and easy leading across the wilderness by the pillar cloud of God, supplied by the very strength of Jesus Christ himself to lead them across the wilderness to take the promised land, and you know what happened. But before they ever got to the promised land and said they are like they're like giants in our eyes, and we're like, grass, they're, we're like grasshoppers in their eyes. And they fail. Before that ever happened, we see failure at the very first stop. Numbers chapter 11, starting with verse 1. You can follow the New King James on the screen. Now, when the people complained, let me just stop right there. Take note of this. This is not a good way to begin a journey with God, to possess the promised land. They had only been out from Mount Sinai three days, and the pillar cloud of God's presence stopped, and they made camp. Why? Because the people complained. It doesn't tell us what they complained about. It was probably their food. And notice what comes next. When the people complained, it displeased God. It displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it. And notice this, his anger was aroused. Now before we finish this first verse, leave it on the screen. Let me explain a principle here. Whiners anger God. When the Lord's people complain, they show themselves to be high in self-centeredness and low in faith. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, we learn this, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now back to verse 1. So the fire of the Lord burned among them. I'm not talking about the guidance of the pillar fire of night. I'm not talking about the glory of God. I'm not talking about the Lord burned in fire like the fires of Pentecost. It was fire of judgment. And it consumed some who were on the outskirts of the camp. And then the people cried out to Moses, and when Moses prayed to the Lord, the fire was quenched. So he called the name of the place Taborah, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. What is Taborah in Hebrew? Burning. There is some repentance here, but the question must be, is there repentance that is godly? Repentance that leads to transformation. If not, then we can expect the whining and the complaining will very shortly manifest itself again. That takes us to verse 4. 